Hello, I'm Gail and I live in Cleveland, Lancashire and I got my diagnosis of dementia nearly four years ago now and I've always loved being creative. Now I'm living with dementia, well it's given me more time to explore lots of different crafts and today I'm going to tell you about the Dementia Craftivism Project. This all started during the first COVID lockdown and some of us started meeting on Zoom to do arts and crafts together and to learn new skills. Funding from the National Lottery Charity Fund enabled us to offer kits, demonstrations and tutorials. Making cards and doing watercolours, drawings and this sent out a message. You can too. Here are some of my fellow crafters explaining just what it meant to them. And I used to say, I'm not doing that. I hate card crafting. <laughs> well, Gail, you've completely <laughs> turned around my idea of card crafting because I'm loving it. What it is, you yeah. just get lost. It's something that you design and you, you achieve it yourself. You design it yourself. Mm. And it's a big achievement when you do it. But I didn't know where to start on my own. So the fact that you sent us the packs with everything in... It's now given me ideas so that I can do it on my own. There was something about doing it together. Yeah. Um, mm. That made it special. And then making your mistake and feeling safe enough to be able to say, oh, my, look what I've done. And then someone will come up, like, say, Stephen, and say, yeah, but I've done that, but this is how I solved it. I really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. Everybody. Thank you. This has been such good fun. Absolutely loved it. And uh, the results um, are, are really surprisingly wonderful. I say surprisingly because I'm a bit of a, you know, cat handed thing with all the glue and what have you. I think our cards look even better than some of the professional ones you can buy in the yeah. shops that are handmade. Yeah. No, mine don't. Yes, they do. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> I've seen them, they do. I love crafting, but I'm not very good at it. i um, thinking, you know, I'm not sure I can really pull this off, but thank you that we can come up with um, satisfying results at the end of it. And yeah. who would have thought we could have made a card from a plaster? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's really opened my eyes. Um, but... Like I say, we, I started off with watercolours, which Francis knows it's... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm really good at that. Really like that. I've, and this card making is really <laughs> tough as well. I mean, it's, I mean, I never never thought ooh, seven years ago that I'd be doing something like this. How can I put it? It's what we all love to do, I think. I always thought you to be born with this skill. But Francis, what Francis said is it's like everything else. There's techniques and an art and you can do it. And I, I, that amazed me, you know. Yeah, I mean, I've already been talking to others and encouraging others. That, Look, if I can do this. And encouraging others to take up their brushes and their and their art materials and, and give it a go themselves. Mm. And they've fed back that they've found it uh, very difficult. Um, that it reduces stress in themselves and gives them such good feelings. We all need a purpose in life. And this, is, this gives us a purpose and it gives us enjoyment and satisfaction. So it's things that make you feel better about yourself. And I found that I suffer with anxiety and it certainly lowered my anxiety levels. Um, I think each card, card crafting sessions and water color, it's, it's good. It, it, Settled your mind, didn't it? Uh, it? Made such a difference to lockdown, <laughs> really mm. has. People with dementia can still learn new yeah. things. It was trying to prove to people that even if you you've never done something before, that you can learn something. 
um, whether it be just a simple craft or something that's a little bit harder to do. But I think when everybody comes together, um, it makes people realise that, yes, we can still do things. One of the other things that happened during lockdown is that people would start to send each other little handmade gifts to cheer one another up. And here's my friend Frances telling us how much it meant to her. Miss sent this out to a few of us and inside it there's a wonderful little note in which she says the Zoomettes consists of a rainbow of friends where everyone's treated with kindness and care. Put this in your rainbow bag as a gentle reminder of COVID-19. Love, Agnes. Hugs and rainbows. <laughs> Lovely, isn't it? I just felt so, oh, it's just the most wonderful feeling. So it's, it's, to know you've got friends like that, I mean, I haven't been too well, um, recently and this little tiny bag arrived in the post from from Dory and I opened it up and inside there are some t tiny objects and a few other bits and pieces um, and on this beautiful little label it says happy bag, a candle to light your way, a pet for when you need a hug, a marble for when you have lost yours, a heart so you know you are loved, and a penny so you will never be penniless. Now isn't that just wonderful? And as I say, it arrived when I was feeling quite low and it just cheered me up so much. It's just a completely beautiful gift to receive. And, and I love it. I really love it. So I hang it up in my kitchen where I can see it every day. I received a whistle from George. Um, I can't tell you how thrilled I was to receive this lovely whistle. He and I had been sort of running an agony column, answering a load of absolutely ludicrous questions. And in the end, um, we have stopped it now, but in the end, it was him writing to me and me having to write back to him under the pseudonym of Agony Franny. So the whistle um, has a label which says, for Agony Franny, um, a wrong way round whistle. And it's from George. So here's my whistle. Um, it's very beautifully carved with kisses or whatever that is on the back. I like to think it's kisses, but I really don't know. Um, and then here on the front is, um, I think, a picture of me, though that's actually quite a lot thinner than I am. Um, and on the top, it has my initial. And I'd like to blow it and make it whistle, but unfortunately, somehow it doesn't. Shh. However, that does not detract from the fact that it was such a wonderful gift to receive from somebody who's become a very good friend. And although I think I've only met him once for real, and we just didn't have much to do with each other, um, he's become a real friend over Zoom. And th through this last long period, um, he's become a, a real friend to me and um, I, I can't tell you what a thrill it was to receive this present. Along the way, we realised that we could use our creations to send out messages to the world. Remembrance Sunday was coming up and several of us painted poppies on pebbles. We left them for members of the public to find. 
We put them on beaches and even in birdhouses. We also tied labels around them to show what we had made. In sharing the things that we had made with the wider world, we are demonstrating the talents, skills and resilience of people with dementia. Our overarching message is we can. I also want to tell you a bit about self-portraits and the classes that we did, which was run by Willie Gilder. Here is Willie's own self-portrait. And here are some of the ones that the rest of the group produced. They may look a bit harrowing, but we found it very therapeutic to be able to tell the world how it sometimes feels to be inside our head. Craftivism isn't just about arts and crafts, it's about music and performance. Ron Amanze is a musician who lives in London. He explains how his frustrations with the system have encouraged him to express his feelings in music and song. And I've been thinking, if you don't hear me, how are you going to know what I'm thinking? With your eyes fixed on me, sometimes you smile. I always smile. And I wonder if you know why. But if you don't hear me when I'm speaking, are you going to know what I'm thinking? Where I live in Luton, there was nothing for somebody of my heritage. Nothing. Um, so I thought, let me set up a, a um, music-related dementia group. And I actually knocked on everybody's door, the local council's door, asking them, would they support me to set up a dementia, creative, industry, creative industries, um, dementia-related project? And it just wasn't happening. So after four years, I kept on tackling the powers that be. So I contacted all the commissioning officers, I contacted all the councillors, um, um, and, and I thought, these people just don't listen to me. They just keep trivialising all my aspirations, and I'm thinking, like, they're satisfied, restricting me to medication and being very timid and not actively involved in anything in a very, in a very meaningful way. And... That was when I became exhausted and I wrote the song, You Come to See Me But You Don't See Me. Yeah? We have conversations and you don't hear me. And they just don't see me for all the aspirations that are still alive inside of me. So that song was really... Um, uh, uh, that song was really a conversation of me being exhausted, with being, being... feeling like invisible, misunderstood, and not really valued for, for my mischievous brain. And if you can't hear me when I'm calling, how are you going to know that I'm falling? And though I no longer dance beneath quiet skies, nor run across open fields, I wonder if you'd believe the mountains I still climb. Let's finish with a few more positive images of things that people with dementia have made during the COVID pandemic. We hope we have showed that even when our faces were masked and we couldn't meet together, we still can.
Um, and I've been able to run some live sessions um, and I have government funding to do it uh, for people in, in uh, Paris where I live. Um, kicking off again in January um, in my own uh, town library in Brecon. And it was all thanks to this because I, I don't think I would have done it without this wonderful start. But the friends, I can see a lot of them's names here and a lot of beaming faces. And it's a thrill actually to be brought back together again like this. So thank you. Thank you, Chris. You were very instrumental right from the start. start. And I think as soon as you spotted that you might have something to offer others, and maybe they might have something to offer you, off you went. And that was what was so wonderful about it, I think. Thank you. Um, I think it was Dory and then Jackie and then George. Yeah, um, I really valued it. Um, as I say, the water colouring, the card making. You, you brought out, all of you really, the different with sharing educating sort of us. you brought out talents I didn't know I had and I thank you all so much for that um I've even sold some of my watercolors Francis <laughs> only for a pound but <laughs> the money's <laughs> gone to uh, I know you have a group <laughs> and haven't you had, isn't the Alzheimer's Society um, in America using your, one of your paintings for Christmas cards? I don't know, are they? Well, I think <laughs> you told me they were, so let's hope. <laughs> oh. Yeah, she did I some lovely Christmas scenes. A, yeah. Yes, I had an email, didn't I? I've mm -hmm. forgotten about that. Well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> very welcome. Yeah. Yes, but the friendship as well, you know, it's, oh, I, I just can't explain. I'm no good with words. Although Liz Jennings, I told her I couldn't do poetry. And I think we were at Woodbrook. And Liz said, just go out. And um, I did the... Uh, called the sea, red cedar tree oh and I couldn't draw before so even that would you like to read it to us story <laughs> you might think that's not poetry <laughs> red cedar tree the shape so strong strong shade for whatever shelters beneath her branches branches like life go up go down down to the ground and up to the sky, twisting and turning along their way. To, way too powerful for lowly eye. But if they can, lowly eye, but they give me strength, strength to keep on reaching for the sky. If trees can do it, well, so can I. <laughs> I stumbled along the way there. Can't read my own writing. <laughs> Doesn't they matter. All stumble along the way. <laughs> Jackie. Yes, it gave me um, a great opportunity because I had done the pebbles and was looking on Twitter when I saw a lady teaching people to do pictures with leading tissue paper and I contacted her and I said to her will you teach me and she said yes of course but I'm in Belfast I said okay no problem so within a couple of weeks my friend and I flew over to her in Belfast and I caught a train down to where she lived and I went to two courses at community centers with her and then flew back to Manchester but since then we've been friends and she's taught me a lot just on uh, WhatsApp and we're still friends. Amazing. George. Um, yeah, I mean, I, <clears throat> in answer to your original question, 
I think, not that I can remember what you said. Uh, I was just thinking, it, I can't remember it either. What was um, it? <laughs> for me, I just needed someone to give me a few simple skills to get started with the painting. And Francis, of course, did that. Um, and I'll tell you what, what's, what's so incredible is that Francis has never, ever, ever criticised negatively anything I've done or anybody else has done. It's, she always finds something. Only once have I known her totally stump, stump for words. And it wasn't in response to one of mine either. But, but basically, she'll find something good to say about anything. And that actually is what we all need and what a lot of us didn't get when we were doing it as kids. So, uh, but, but having said that, I mean, the, the, the jokiness and the chat and stuff is great too. So um, it's just lovely to do it. And I, and I absolutely love painting now. You've um, you've done some amazing paintings. Have you got one there that you can hold up for us, George, by any chance? Oh well, I can do. I've just done this one. Can you sure. see that? Wow, that's quite something. Another still slightly damp. Hence, hence, yeah. I'm just working. Is that a, is that a watercolor or what is it? It is watercolor. Yep. I've only I only ever used watercolor. It's very striking. Could you have done anything like that two or three years ago? Oh, God, no. I, I didn't know where to start. I had no idea whatsoever about paints and drawing. And I mean, just the idea of drawing what you see. It's easy to say, but actually, it's not that easy to translate into something on paper that looks like what you're looking at. But it's so fascinating when it when it happens. I, I regard it as magic, um, but possibly black magic, but it's nevertheless magic. Keith. And I haven't sold anything yet. You will, you will. <laughs> well, you have in a way, George, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. Um, but yeah, what, but you're what, not paying, are you? No, you get a free book out of it. Ah. Uh, <laughs> with, your, with your artwork on the front. Oh, well. <laughs> I'll come to that in a moment, but just to, just to answer your question, Philly, and to, to, to add to what my friends have previously said, for, for me, it's been, it's been almost life-changing being part of this group and certainly life-enhancing um, because two years ago, I would never have thought I could do what I've been doing within this group. Um, and, you know, so often we're told we can't do things or we're not going to be able to do things. And what this project has served to do is to reaffirm and reestablish in my mind that I can still do things yeah. and I could do things I've never done before rather than do things which I had done and continue to do. That's one big plus, you know, and I thank everybody for that, primarily Francis, but also George and others in the group as well, because we do encourage and support each other, yeah. which is vitally important. And what it also does is it, it affirms that what you're doing is worthwhile, you know, because you sometimes wonder yourself whether it's worth doing, but knowing that other people value it adds to one's own self of self valuing. And what it also does is, and, and somebody mentioned, I think it was Gail mentioned about Willie Gilder's um, portrait course. And, you know, we could all recognize ourselves in those pictures. Um, and what that did was it, it, it reminded us to look inward, but also the, the painting has taught us to look outward as well. And just driving home today from, from Faversham, where Rosemary and I were, looking at the clouds and looking at the trees and looking at what we were driving past, I'm doing it now with completely different perspective. Yeah, yeah. That is because of this group and what we've learned. It really are, has totally changed for the better the way I see the world. And I thank, yeah. I thank it for that. And, and lastly, to say in answer to George's question about not, not uh, selling stuff. Well, George, when George was first painting, he won't mind me saying this, I hope, but his paintings were fabulous, but they were very, very matter of fact. And what George has done now is he's moving into some abstract work as well. And the painting that is on the front cover of a book to be published next year, isn't with one of your abstracts, George, 
which the publisher absolutely loved. And you'll get sight of that very shortly. And Francis likewise has got a, a, a cover coming out as well on the neighborhood uh, book, Francis. So that's great to see. Oh, that's Thank exciting you. stuff, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, Tracy, the way, and then. i got friends on here, sorry. If I could have that photograph sent through to me, because one book cover I'm working on at the moment, think Kitwood Flower and think Sergeant Pepper, and that's <laughs> what I'm working on. <laughs> I love it. Uh, we'll go to Tracy, and then maybe Jerry, if you'd like to come in after Tracy. Oh, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I just want to um, echo what Keith said, really, because people always believe that we, when you have dementia, you can't learn things. When, I, when the pandemic hit, I was a bit lost, really, because after travelling back and forth, left, right and centre, I was left in, with nothing, really, to do. Um, and when, you're, when you live alone and you, your family live far away and friends do as well, you have to find t things to... Um, to fill up the space of life. <laughs> and I learnt how to knit, I learnt how to do macrame, and um, I learnt how to I've also do a lot of other different crafts here, then everywhere. And that even now, that just keeps me a, a couple of hours in the evening when I don't watch TV, I sit in the conservatory with all my lights going and sit and do some macrame and that and that's really and I could do it now without I can I watch YouTube because YouTube is really good for me to do and I just do macrame through there really and I make lots of little projects especially for Christmas presents now. Tracy don't you also write lovely poetry? <laughs> um, well I don't I don't really write much I, I, I do write a creative writing group with Liz Jennings um, and I have written poetry in the past but I haven't I don't it's not something I do all the time now and that's my words don't always come easily now so I tend to do um, make things with hands like or just paint so 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 paint on paper and hope for the best <laughs> Well, I've got That's one crazy. of your poetry books, Tracy. <laughs> Thank you, Dory. Oh, an amazing little... <laughs> books coming over out of everybody's ears. It's just phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got Jerry, and then um, Chris has joined us as well. Oh, Francis, can you wait, or do you want to come in right now? After everybody, please. Okay. Thank you. So, Jerry. Hi, everyone. I feel a bit of a fraud actually, uh, for Lee, because I missed a lot of the, the activities because uh, I was so busy over lockdown. Um, but when I was able to, to, to join yourself, I was always encouraged uh, to, to do things that I used to do before uh, and then I stopped doing because I was too busy working and uh, trying to put money on the table and food in the mouth of my wife and my children. Previously, I used to love drawing and that stopped with full-time working and I took it up again with the encouragement from yourself uh, and other people. Because you were an architect, um, weren't you? I was, yeah. yes, yes, I was an yeah. architect, yeah, but my, my, I wanted to be a cartoonist. Mm. And that's what I wanted to do what, what I wanted to be when I was at school. Um, and that's what I do now, I draw cartoons uh, and just really funny, ditty illustrations and things like which I quite enjoy. And I've also been encouraged uh, to do poetry as well, which is something I would never, ever have dreamed of before. Like, um, So I've written quite a few poems, uh, and we're also, uh, also, as a group, we're in the process of, of songwriting as well, original music and original uh, uh, songs. Um, and the idea is to release an album next year um, of original songs uh, written and created by people living with uh, dementia. Um, and that should be something to look forward to next year. Like, so yeah, yeah. It's, uh, but what I, what I think now, the guess out the whole thing is, as I look at all the faces on, the, on here now, and I've met many of them before, and it's just a sense of happiness, uh, the sense of uh, a community here. Um, everybody just seems to have enjoyed themselves. Um, a bit at peace, and uh, it's great to see this sort of thing. Like it's, it's, it's brilliant. Thanks, Jerry. Thank you. We love your cartoons. 
Uh, Chris, and then Francis. Um, I didn't expect to be on here and speaking. Um, I just want to say that I think that the, the craft, craftivism and things that we've done together as groups has, has been a lifesaver for me and for, and for lots of us. And I think that my dementia friends are so important to me and I'm sure we all feel the same way. And it's just about coming together. And, you know, I, I put in the chat box, who said that people living with dementia can't learn new things? We've blown that one out, out of the water and we can learn new things. And I can remember when we were doing things with the care home people and I did one and it was um, the, the clay, the clay prints and painting of leaves. And I think I did it with the group as well. And I never thought I'd be able to do anything like that with anyone else, let alone do it myself. So I was able to, to do that and it was enjoyable even though we did that by Zoom and the care home's um, microphone wasn't working, but we still got by. And when the Zoomettes met in Woodbrook a few months back and um, Fran took a painting class for us, and I agree with what everyone said, Fran is so patient. She's always got kind words to say. And I'd recently had surgery on my hand and I'm right-handed and my right arm is in plaster. And I said, Fran, I can't, I can't do this, you know, I'm right-handed. She said, Chris, just try with your left hand. So I did, and I think that's probably the best painting that, I, that I've done, <laughs> because with, with lots of patience, and, um, and, and I thought, oh my gosh, I was able to paint with my left hand. So it just goes to show, even though I thought, no, I definitely can't do it, you know, with Fran's... Um, um, egging me on and support I was even able to do it with my wrong hand so I just think it's all been wonderful I think I value and appreciate every single one of you and I'm so glad that I've been able to be a part of it and more importantly I'm so glad to be a part of, you know of the deep network and um, meeting all of my lovely friends here so thank you thank you Chris um Going to ask Francis to say something in a minute, but while she is, if anybody's got anything they want to show on the screen, get, take this chance to gather it together. No pressure, you don't have to. Fanny. So while they're gathering, I just wanted to show you a piece of work by my friend Dory. Because at one juncture early on in COVID, we were doing some sort of fun um, meetings just to have a laugh. And in one of them, Dory and I were running it together and we decided that we would, while the whole thing was going on, we would do a self-portrait of each other. <laughs> and I had done quite a serious self-portrait of Dory, which she now owns because she liked it, thought it looked like her. But I want to show you the self-portrait she did of me. So here it is. <laughs> 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 you did need your hair your hair cut at the time because it was during lockdown that's where the lovely, shoes it? came <laughs> it's lovely isn't it <laughs> the wild and woolly francis wild yeah. and woolly francis in the beacons right has anybody got anything for our our show and tell session tracy mm -hmm. and then keith to start with So um, I made this scarf, so as you can see it, all multicoloured because that's I'm quite a, a shiny, sunny person. So it wow. started off as a shawl and I got fed up with it. So I made it into a scarf instead. So I wear, so that's my scarf. Is that knitted, Tracy? Um, knitted, yeah. Knitted. It's, yeah. it's from a loom. I do like a, oh, yes. like a round loom. Yeah. I mean, I've made this, I don't know if you can see this. It's, um, it's, a, it's, a, an, it's an owl. Oh. And from the Kwame, and that it's really hard to see, isn't it? I suppose. No. I've also I've made a I made a bag. I made a couple of bags which have given us presents. Can you see? Can you, are you able to see these? Yes, know. we are. We can okay, see. Okay, so that's like a big, um, like a little a carrier bag or something. Now I've made. Can like I say something rude? No. Oh, all right. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> What did he say? What did, what did you say, George? It's all right. No, well, I'm not allowed to say it. I'm not allowed to say it. 
<laughs> and then I'm also I'm just making um, an owl for Christmas. Um, I don't know if you can say oh, it's half half done. But... Oh, look at that! Oh, wow! No, so it's like wow. a big one. That's so that's half. So that's that. And I've got to do the wings yet. So that's the the feathers, the plume. And then I've got to do the yeah. That's that's what I'm doing at the moment. Incredible, Tracy. <laughs> How about you, Keith? Uh, well, when, when you're married to a very proficient artist, um, it can be a, it can either be encouraging or intimidating. So I'm going to show you something that's my first ever framed painting, and this was this was inspired by Francis and from my imagination in one of our recent art classes. So Rosemary thought it was so good she went out and framed it for me. Wow. Oh, oh yeah, I remember that one. It is good. Closer, That's beautiful. Yeah. Tell us about it, Keith. Tell us about it. Well, we were talking in the group, George, Francis, myself, and a couple of others about Christmas cards mm. and um, what we might design for a Christmas card. And I hadn't got anything in front of me, but from my imagination, maybe from the back of my mind, that picture appeared in my head. Mm. And then I just painted it in half an hour, 40 minutes within the group. But then, so people don't feel too chilly, the last painting I did, I did actually put on Facebook as well, is in oils. And uh, that, was, that was from a week or two ago on the beach at Deal. Mm -hmm. So we sat in a pub looking out and I saw this seagull on the chimney pots. So I got my mobile phone out and photographed it. And it was a rubbish photograph, but it did enable me to have that vision in, my, in front of me to, to paint it. And what I liked was that the clouds, a friend of mine pointed this out, the clouds actually reflect the colouring of the seagull. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So, Why didn't you do the painting actually in the pub? Well, there you go, because I was I probably had too much to drink. Yeah, it's a lovely, I needed lovely. to sober up. <laughs> Has anybody got anything else they'd like to share? Tell you what else Keith showed us at the beginning of time was a picture of himself aged I think about eight and then one of him now and he's it, it, they're so sweet and I think he'd just been told what a, he was no good at painting but you see it's turned out that he's done some wonderful stuff mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. all have I mean there's also I don't know if Stephen Tamblin was here but there was people like him who did he was talked in the movie about uh, how he never expected to do it but it was in there you know yeah. it, he, he yeah. turns out that he's the most fantastic painter of um, of, of birds. Yes. And then we we got um, Clive Rogers. I don't know if he's here either, but Clive turned out to, to be the most wonderful painter. He does all sorts of things, and he's done some really memorable paintings of his time in the Falklands. You know, I mean, I can't tell you how moving this whole thing has been, and it's a bit joyful as well because. Quite a lot of the artists have gone on to really do stuff with their art, and um, you, you know they they're getting such pleasure from it, which is what it was always all about for me. And it, it's lovely. George's woodwork classes, um, which thankfully stopped. I went to, um, but my husband wouldn't let me actually do it because I'd already got quite a bad track record with knives. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> And some of you will have seen the videos that were inspired by George's woodwork classes. <laughs> Thank you. I had to, unfortunately, I had to stop doing the woodwork because no. I'm, I've got arthritis in yeah. my hands. So, but that's why I turned to uh, art instead. I have got an example of something that you sent me. Oh, in there the you post. go. Mm. Picture. I'm running out of firewood, so it may not be with me much longer. But don't you bloody <laughs> don't. <laughs> Not much wood up here. Chris, let's come to you. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it, but oh, hang on, that way. It's um, it's a little hat made from a bit of toilet roll tube and and some wool. And I did that at my uh, dementia cafe in the woods thing, and it was dead easy to make. But um, it, I think it looks quite impressive, and I thought. <laughs> I'd make some for Christmas dinner and everyone could have one by their place names. 
-hmm. And um, the other thing that I've done recently, I haven't knitted for over 30 years. And um, uh, because I have Lewy Body Dementia, they were raising awareness of Lewy Body Dementia at the Lewy Body Society. And they asked people to hand knit scarves with the intention of wrapping them around the Royal mm -hmm. Albert Hall, which I think is 244 meters all the way around. So I knitted a scarf for that. And I went up and was part of the day, you know, when we were wrapping it around. And we had enough scarves to wrap around the Royal Albert Hall nearly five times. And um, so, yeah, I have started knitting again, even though somebody had to show me how to cast on. I can now do that on my own. And um, yeah, I'm enjoying the crafts and I really want <coughs> to get back to Fanny's uh, painting group. Thanks, Chris. And um, Dory? Yeah, I think I showed these before, but I've been knitting Christmas puddings, <laughs> Father Christmas hats, and you put a Ferrero Rocher inside. Oh, very and, good. <laughs> and I've been selling them to raise money for deep group in mould and it's paid for us all to go out for a Christmas dinner next week. Wow. <laughs> Excellent. <Great. laughs> we haven't got much time left. But when can, I just, oh. can I just pay tribute to Gail, <coughs> please? I'll come back to them. <coughs> okay. Because because Gail really is the most incredible crafter. I mean, she's so bloody good. It really annoys me, but <clears throat> uh, when you know she start, she did some fabulous paintings and drawings, and uh, she she, I, I think in a sense she inspired me as well because I thought, well, if she can do it, why can't I? <clears throat> yeah, it's been here's, fantastic. Here's one of Gail's cre creations. Yeah, you haven't got any knickers on. <laughs> You used to make teddy bears professionally, didn't you? You had a business scale and and you sort of refound <coughs> to do stuff um, through this. This I don't know if we should call this a project. It's just something that happened, something wonderful that happened. But you did just mention, um, Gail, I think it was, the care home project. I don't know if we've got just a minute. Would anybody like to briefly tell people about that? Because that was something wonderful as well. George? Well, I'll tell you about the bit that I did. <clears throat> I, I worked with two or three ladies um, in a care home who have dementia. And, um, uh, and we, were, we were writing poems. Um, and, you know, it was, it was virtual. But all I did was, was just encourage them to tell me, you know, about their lives. Uh, and they, it came out, I just kept writing um, sort of key, key phrases or sentences or places they used to go to and so on. Um, and I tell you what, it was, it was actually relatively easy to put them into what became rather nice poems. Um, and they, they had them and they loved them. And they kept, I it's hope. all on Zoom, wasn't it, during COVID? That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that, that really worked well. Um, I did actually meet Napa at the Congress and uh, recognise the person I was talking. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Oh. Gail, did you want to add to that? Did you have your hand up? Um, Get your handkerchief out. No, I'm quite emotional now. Hey ho. Um, no, um, it was absolutely wonderful um, because it wasn't what we got from it. It was what the other people was getting from these, um, yeah, Ed's going now. What, um, when we went into the care homes, it was watching the smiles on the people's faces that we actually um, was, was teaching other people to do and over Zoom. And I think that for me um, meant more than anything because it was bringing joy to others. They was in a care home and they'd been um, in lockdown for months and months, hadn't seen anybody. So just a friendly, smiley face, having a laugh as we did. And what happened was that these people in the care home started to come alive. 
and they started to talk about things that they never even discussed with anybody. And even the people that was working in the care homes had said that they were finding out so much more about these people and it was through the crafts. So to me, that was, yeah, it was just wonderful. It was, and it was, it was a lovely uh, idea that came out of the group. It wasn't, you know, top down, nobody imposed it. It, it came out of the group and we, we tried to find a way to make it happen. And we did with, with five care homes, I think it was. And um, you were all involved. I mean, the thing that I've, just to add, the thing that I've loved about craftivism is that it, um, it has been so organic and it's just involved in all sorts of different directions. I mean, to be honest, I don't really know what's happening at the minute, but I know things are happening, but that's lovely because um, it's completely out of control. And so many arts and crafts projects um, relating to dementia, they go and hire a tutor to come and teach people something. And uh, this has just been brilliant because we haven't had any of that. What we've done is, is found all the skills and the talents and the life experience that all of you guys have got and can bring to the table. And that's what you've done. Mm -hmm.